about registering your dance studio. So the next step in starting your dance studio would be to register your company name. You should have your company name and your web domain ready to go. And if you need help with these, you can refer to the previous videos on how to choose your name for your dance studio. But just as a side note, what's really important is to make sure that your domain name is the same as your company name and that the domain is available. If you have a certain name in mind but the domain isn't available, don't do it. This is going to cause a lot of confusion um, with, for your clients on you know, what's happening and where they should be going while they're trying to get a hold of you. So definitely make sure that you match and they are ready to be set up. So the first thing to do when registering your company name is to research what legal entities are available in your country. We have a lot of friends and followers from all over the world watching these videos and every country offers different legal entities and names. So you want to make sure to do your research and find one that's suitable for you. In South Africa, Chase Dance was a sole proprietor and that made the most sense for me and my business in that country. Here in America, we are a limited liability corporation and it also just it makes sense for how I wanted to start the business here and where I see the business going in the future. Do you need startup capital to register your dance studio? This could be a whole other video on its own, but technically speaking, you'll need just a few hundred dollars maybe to get yourself registered and um, just within the radar of opening. So I took my personal savings, it cost me just over uh, $400 to register the business and to obtain my operational licenses. I fully recommend going with a lawyer to register your company just to make sure that it's done the right way and a lot of lawyers will also offer a consultation with you to sit down and talk to you about all the entity options and just to find which one would be the most suitable for you. So something that works for me, like an LLC, might not work for you and where you want your business to go for the next five to ten years. So I highly recommend sitting down with somebody who really knows um, the difference between all of them, the benefits and the pros and cons of everything, and they can sit down with you and go over this and help you choose. Some lawyers will also cover your operational licenses. So depending on what state you are in the United States and what county you're in and what city you're in, there are county licenses and city licenses that you need in order to be able to operate and run a business. So although I have Chase Dance Company registered as an LLC, I then have my county license, and then if you are operating within city limits of a certain city, of Orlando, so this is in Orlando, Florida, within the city limits you need another license. It's, it's all sort of just paper pushing and a money making thing really, but there are people who have jobs, specifically hunting down people who have registered businesses but have not obtained a business license. So you want to make sure that you, if you need both, you want to make sure that you have them. For your operational city license or county license or both, usually you have to have it, no not usually, you do legally have to have it displayed on the wall of operations in your business. But if you don't have a secure space, like me at the moment, where you're traveling around to different venues that you use with your clients, then you'll have what's called a mobile operation license. So I am allowed to, I'm legally allowed to travel around to different venues and different places to give my dance classes. Time is your most valuable currency. That's my personal opinion, but it's something that once you spend, you can never get back. So if you can outsource this process to a lawyer or other people to help you, I would highly recommend it. You could be using your time to do something else to get your business going in the right direction. So once you register your business, you will receive what's called an EIN number, which is your employer identification number. This is similar to your national ID number or your social security card, um, social security number. Every country's terms are different, um, but this is how your business is recognized for taxes and um, paperwork and all of those fun legalities. Your EIN number is also something that you're going to need to open up your business bank account, which I'm going to talk about next. So once you get registered and you have your EIN number, you're going to take that EIN number and open your business bank account. Once you open your business bank account, it starts to feel really real because all of a sudden you get this card in the mail and it has your company name on it and it's one of the most exciting feelings ever when you first get your business bank account. You're like, wow, 
this is really happening. It sort of starts to light a fire up under your ass, like, this is real, this is happening. It's, it, in a way, it's motivation because you're thinking, well, people now know that you've opened your company and you're starting this and you have money on the line, like, now it's your job to really make it happen. Some of you guys do have a few questions about the different entities that are available in the United States. I'm more than happy to help you with what I do know. If you just comment below, I can all answer those questions with pleasure. But if you have any more really detailed, serious questions, you should probably seek um, professional advice in, in regards to those details. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll be back next week with you on how to start your dance studio from scratch.